हेलो फ्रेंड्स टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज वॉट आर द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ सर्विंग द डेफिनेशन क्लासिफिकेशन एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ सर्विंग विल स्टार्ट विद द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सर्विंग नाउ वॉट इज सर्विंग सर्विंग इज बेसिकली द आर्ट एंड साइंस ऑफ मेजरिंग हॉरिजेंटल एज वेल एज द वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस of any point on or near the surface of the earth the technical definitions as we can see on screen are it is to determine the relative location of a particular points near the surface of the earth and it is also defined as the vertical distances between objects or measuring of angles between the lines or determination of location of points on or above the surface of the earth if we see the actual definition which is in the book and we have to write in the exams is surveying is the art and science of determining the relative position of various points or stations on the surface of the earth by measuring horizontal and vertical distances angles and taking the details of these points and preparing map or plan to any scale mean the basic function of surveying is to prepare a map or a plan the next point of discussion is what are the objectives of surveying by using survey we can find out the relative position of the point and which are used in preparation of map the second objective main objective is to establish the boundaries of the land for example whenever we go to purchase any plot there are defined boundaries now how these boundaries are defined example the countries states are divided into boundaries these boundaries are measured by using survey and the last purpose the third main objective is to select a suitable site for an engineering project now what are the engineering projects like residential projects commercial projects railway lines metro lines bridges the suitable site for this particular engineering projects can be find out by using your survey because we require topographical maps contour maps and these maps can be formed by using your surveying only moving on to our next topic which is classification of survey now the survey is classified into two types basically the primary survey and secondary survey so we see what are the types first as i said primary survey primary classifications are plain survey and geodetic survey which will be explained in detail in further slides now moving on to second which is secondary classifications now secondary classifications are again divided into subheads first is based on instruments the instruments we are using for survey first is chain survey which is generally used for linear measurement next is your compass survey compass survey is used for angular measurements next plane table surveying plane table surveying is the simplest method which is used for angular as well as linear measurement next theodolite survey theodolite surveying will give you more accuracy and which is used for horizontal as well as angular survey then comes echometric survey echometric survey is generally performed to find out horizontal distances and last is photography survey photography survey is a newest method of surveying next it is again classified into based on methods the first method is triangulation survey and second is traverse surveying which will be discussing further later next part is based on object what are the object first is geological survey then mine survey for mining purpose then your agrological survey and last is your military survey and then based on nature of field where we are doing it first is land survey on the surface of the earth next one is marine survey under or below the water and astronomical survey in the air so these are the secondary classification again moving on to our primary classifications 
we'll see in this uh, detail first is plane survey as the name indicate plane survey means in which the surface of the earth is considered as a plane flat ground as we know the surface of the earth is spherical but here we consider it as a plane surface in such survey the line joining any two points or a station is considered as a straight line as we see in this figure the curvature of the earth is not taken into consideration these two points are joined by using a straight line so the surface of the earth is considered as a plane so it is known as plane survey moving on to geodetic survey it is opposite of it in which the curvature of the earth is taken into consideration and the line joining any two stations is considered as a curve line as we can see in this picture the curvature of the earth is taken into consideration if i am joining two points here a and point b so we are considering the curvature of the earth we will see what is the distinguish between this because it is asked in exam so the first difference is the earth surface is considered as plane surface while in geodate the curvature of the earth is taken into consideration the second point is the curvature of earth is ignored in your plane surveying while in geodetic survey the curvature of the earth is taken into consideration next point the line joining any two stations is considered as straight line while in geodetic the line joining any two stations is considered as curve line the next point the line or the triangle formed by any three points on the surface of the earth is considered as a plane while in geodetic survey the triangle formed by any three points will be considered as a spherical next is the angles of triangle are considered to be plane angles where we can use normal trigonometry while in geodetic survey the angles of triangle are considered to be spherical one these are not normal triangles next carried out for a small area this is the important point carried out for the small area having distance less than area less than 250 km square while the geodetic survey is carried out for the area large areas having areas more than 250 km square so this is the main difference between two of this now moving on to further topic which is the principles of surveying if you don't know the principles of surveying then you can't go further so basically there are two main principles of surveying one is to work from whole to part and second is to locate a point by at least two measurements so whenever we doing survey we have to work from whole to the part and whenever we have to plot a point or we have to measure a distance of a single point we have to measure by at least using two different points or two different measurement whether it is linear measurement or angular measurement we'll discuss this in detail the first principle which was in surveying large area a system of control points are identified and they are located with high precision as we can see this red dots indicate what this indicate your main station points the next procedure then the secondary control points are located using lesser precision methods so between these points we are marking the secondary points after that the details of the localized areas are measured and plotted with respect to the secondary control points with respect to the secondary control points we will further go in detail and find out the local areas next step and this method is called the working from whole to the wall this means what you are working from boundaries towards your center so that the error will get minimized so we have to work from whole to the part okay if the area is calculated or surveyed by using this method then the error will be minimized 
Now moving on to second principle. The second principle was to locate a single point by using at least two measurements. So how will you do it? Let's see the first figure. We have to plot point C over here. And we have line A, B. So for finding out C, we have to use two measurements. Either it can be a two linear measurements or two angular measurements or one linear and one angular measurement. So in first problem or the first example, we have used a distance AC which is known and the angle CBA, the known angle CBA. So by using these two, we simply mark an arc over here and we draw a line of given angle which will bisect that particular line and wherever the intersection is take place will get point C. In second figure as we can see we have used two angular measurements angle CAB and angle CBA to plot point C. In figure C we have used two measurements angular as well as linear but from a single point this can be done also because from b we are available the distance bc and we also have the bearing a b c so we can plot point c whereas in figure d we know the distance a b and the offset perpendicular offset from a b is C and the distance of C is already known. In last figure E, we have used two linear measurements, linear measurement AC and BC. Simple using geometry, we can mark two arcs and where they are bisecting, we can plot the point C. So wherever we are doing surveying and locating a point, we have to use at least two measurements, whether it can be a linear measurement or a angular measurement. Thank you.